Okay, so let's go ahead and look on the world browser. So you'll notice in the world browser, right here, I put a few models inside. We have it um, four tabs. The one is the objects. It displays us all objects that are currently in scenery. Some of them can be enabled for render, visible or invisible. And you can see this by um, icons on the side. So for example, it says ground is a locked, so it's locked animation. And you can see like we can visible, lock it, invisible. And again, this is applied to the single object or to the layers. If it's nested objects or have it multiple groups, you can select main, main camera and we have a different options. Or for example, this Mac imported model, it's have just a body or other properties. So we can preview this. Sometimes we have many groups nested and you can nest them more. In some cases, you will have it a bone or vector structure, mostly like a spline or a specific object from Cornucopia pre-animated or maybe some other. So that you can browse through all objects and the subcomponents of this object. The icons also represent different type, the playing ground. When we create, for example, water, you'll notice C is have the same infinity plane look. We also have a camera, light, the objects, and the ecosystem or um, plants that is root type of the plants that can be pre-animated. Okay, so next we have a tab, it is materials, which is a group and organized materials in our um, scenery. And it's kind of nice because we have a standard, we have materials which using in a plant, imported, for example, for this model. And if you use it cloud or volumetric materials, ecosystem materials, or um, ecosystems as a set with multiple objects. So it will be displayed here as well. The next, we have a library. So if you're using any in library uh, objects, it will display here. And it's a kind of important next, it is the link it. So you can see right here is the textures that using and link to our object beside you can reload it and they're not just informational you can also modify it for example like this light if you double time click on that and you also have it preset the editing application for example photoshop you can see it's edited inside so i can modify it save and after update textures that I'm using inside for this. So it's useful. As well, if you just double time click, you can see it's showing full path location for this texture. Some textures, like for example, for the plants, they won't be qualified for edit. Again, it's a very specific one. As well, you can see right here, we have an object that is showing me linking object or import object and location. Okay, below this, before we go into these icons, I want to show this is informational and it will be related to the how many objects we're using. So first is actually showing how many CPUs is using on the system. So currently I have actually six CPU, but um, it's a course, it's displaying a bit more. Uh, we have how many objects and light and also how many currently polygons in our scenery. As an arrow, you can click down and you can select available resources or how much is GPU resources using for this scenery. So currently it's 100 11 megabyte. Okay, below you'll notice we have additional options. One is creating a new layer. And when you work with your scenery, if it's very simple, sometimes you don't need it, but many times I will create multiple layers and it does help me to kind of adjusting items and move them in different layers. On this case, I group them. And beside that, when your scenarios look like a bit maybe hard to watch, you can hide from visibility specific layers and work just on those you prefer. So it won't be your video card render will be fast. You won't have a lag when you're working with this. So group and organizing, it does help a lot of um, to work properly. So the next, we also have a delete. 
You can always delete item by selecting and press key delete or you can highlight and click on the icon delete. If you have an object selected, you have it also icon, the edit select object. Many times you can access by just double time click or if you prefer, you can click on the bottom, which is will preload it, the default editor for the selected objects. We also have it next as export selected object and you can export in multiple formats. Um, however, just let you know some of the objects they may be locked from export. So if they copyrighted or other things or user locked, like for example, this one, you can see it says you cannot export some of those objects out. And then next it is creating the function editor that we can create a very complex interactions between properties of the object and properties in the scenery. Again, this is, you will see this um, function editor quite a bit often when we will work with multiple like uh, terrain uh, sizing, terrain um, shaping materials and many other ways. But this currently function editor, it's related to the object position, orientation, size. You can see right here properties and with the scenery properties, how we can link them together. So we'll work on this. Beside um, navigation inside, you also can resize size of your objects, your windows. You can also inside the sort based on uh, your selection. And you can also create additional when it's available um, layers or access to specific material editor directly from your material viewer. So it's quite a bit useful um, specific navigation and object access inside the view. And we'll use this almost every time when we create some scenery.